Hi, welcome to the video. And on Tuesday, Tesla dropped another 4.84% all the way down to $653.20. If you pull out just a little bit further, it's actually not that bad. But if you look at it on a monthly time scale, then you might think something is actually wrong. But me personally, I am still holding. And if I had cash, I would continue buying because I think a lot of these fears are overblown. A lot of the reasons this stock is dropping is having to do with perceived rising competition. And I say perceived because that's that's really what it is. It's the perception of people encroaching on Tesla's territory, whether or not they are actually going to be competitive uh, challengers. I think that's up for debate. But without further ado, let's dive in. The first thing I want to talk about is Ford. Ford has actually sold some EVs. They have sold 3,739 Mustang Mach-E electric vehicles, which is a rival to Tesla's Model Y. They also had a hybrid F-150 truck that also boosts their sales last month up to 9,000 267 units. Morgan Stanley analysts note that, quote, while U.S. EV sales rose 34% in February, Tesla's share fell to 69% from 81% the prior year. Quote, the Ford Mustang Mach-E accounted for nearly 100% of the share loss, end quote. On paper, this is very, very good for Ford, and it seems to be bad for Tesla. But remember that the total market share of EV cars is still so, so small. As other car companies get into this space, it's only normal that Tesla's EV share of the whole market is going to drop because prior when Ford was producing zero electronic vehicles uh, all the way up till 2020, Tesla had a huge chunk of the market because they were the only players in town as every single other car manufacturer has finally started to get on board with EVs. That share is going to continue to drop, but that doesn't mean that their total electric vehicle sales are going to drop. Tesla delivered 500,000 vehicles last year. Right now, a medium case is that they will deliver over 750,000. I suspect that they will probably deliver up to a million, if not more. So their share is absolutely growing. But if you look at it, yes, as a percentage of the pie, it's going to decrease because they aren't going to be the only players in town like they have been. But Ford is a very, very small player right now, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. The main challenger is definitely going to be VW Group, Volkswagen Group, who sold almost half as many EVs as Tesla did in 2020. They actually tripled their delivery of 73,000 in 2019 to 231,600 deliveries. And that's a phenomenal job. Not only were their deliveries amazing, but recently there's another news article that came out today was that analysts at UBS Group tore up, they opened up Volkswagen's new electric car ID3 and compared it to some Tesla cars and quote, found that the platform underpinning VW's EV models will be fully cost competitive with Tesla and boast best in class energy density and efficiency. Analysts led by Patrick Hummel called the car, quote, the most credible EV effort by any legacy auto company so far. So due to this news, Volkswagen stock has climbed up 4.69%, almost exactly the same amount that Tesla uh, stock has dropped. And if there is any proper challenger to Tesla, it's going to be Volkswagen. Volkswagen has actually done a good job not being so late to the party that they are totally out of the game. Their CEO, Herbert Dietz, has long recognized that EV companies are the future. But there is one thing you have to know about Herbert Dietz, what he actually thinks about Tesla. And spoiler alert, he's a big fan and recognizes them as a huge threat. Let's dive back into the past. This is an article from February 28, 2019, where Volkswagen's Herbert Dies says, Tesla is doing a good job and has an edge. It might sound like not a big deal, but when you are the CEO of a rival car company, giving these seemingly small compliments is actually a huge concession. In 2019, when they ask Dies who's going to be the EV leader by 2020, he says he can't tell you the names of the big players, but it might be Tesla, it might be Apple, it might be someone from China. I hope that it will be still Volkswagen. We are working hard. I'm not holding anything against them. I think he's actually being very, very honest here. He couldn't say definitively that it's going to be Volkswagen, whereas many, many CEOs would probably just lie and say, for sure, it's going to be this company I work for. He's being honest. He realizes that 
they are at a disadvantage being a legacy auto company. They have ICE cars that they still have to produce. They have a legacy they have to maintain. Whereas companies like Tesla or Apple, because they're newer to the space, they actually just have more freedom. He also recognizes it could be someone from China where you have the full power of the government behind you, where when it comes to business, anything goes. Dees also admits, I think Tesla is doing a good job. They don't have to care about the legacy. They don't have to care about the next generation of gasoline and motors, and so they can really focus on the future. It's an advantage. And again, this is in 2019. This is his words just a year and a half ago. You can feel the uncertainty. You can feel the acceptance that they are very, very far behind. And I think Volkswagen has made a tremendous amount of progress in a year and a half, but it's still not enough to catch up with Tesla. And there are two key reasons why, and it goes into what he perceives Volkswagen's main advantages are, which I don't really see as that big of an advantage for that long. This is in July 24th, 2020, where Dees again praises Elon Musk, quote, Elon Musk delivers results that many have deemed impossible. Dees, a key driver of VW's electric car initiatives, and Musk have exchanged compliments in the past. Genius recognizes genius. Musk sees somebody that understands what he's doing because he likes what he's doing and he gives the same love and affection back. The article says the former BMW executive, Dees, has repeatedly hailed Tesla's technological achievements, while Musk has said the VW chief is doing more than any other major auto manufacturer to go electric. Now, finally, let's go to this November 17th, 2020 article, where Dees credits Tesla's momentum. He says it will be a race, but he thinks VW has some advantages. And here, let's look at its advantages. According to an article in Electric, CODs made some comments after announcing VW's group's new five-year plan. He made it clear that the investments are in place, at least in part, to compete with and catch up with Tesla. Quote, yes, it's going to be a race with Tesla. However, he also made it clear that he believes the Volkswagen group has some key advantages. Dees specifically mentioned its different body styles and its dealership network. The automaker's production capacity also has the potential to quickly catch up with Tesla, especially with new investments. Dees continued, quote, they are ramping up fast. We have more different body styles. And when it comes to an established dealership network, we have an advantage over Tesla. So Dees believes because they have these factories already in place and in different body styles, that gives them an advantage. But I don't think people care that much about stylistic things of the body as much as they do the range of a battery, the acceleration, how a car actually performs. This body style thing is very, very surface level. And I'm sure some people care about it, but I don't think that's a huge competitive advantage. Same thing with the dealership network. That's just about how cars get distributed. Sure, if we accept that this is true, this means that they could get cars to people faster, more efficiently, but ultimately people, when they are investing in these cars that are going to cost 30, 40, $50,000 at least, for right now, they are going to pick their favorite cars. So I don't think it matters that much whether or not you have a dealership network. I think Tesla has done a totally adequate job with their dealership network, AKA they don't need a dealership. They can directly deliver the cars to you and they also ultimately pass on their savings. And when we talk about their factories, I don't think Volkswagen can actually compete. They might be able to do it better than other legacy companies, but Tesla's gigafactories are being built from scratch with each new factory being made cheaper than the previous one, there's going to be one in every single continent. Once those are ramped up to full capacity, we are going to be seeing millions of cars being sold every year on every continent. But if body styles or dealership network doesn't matter, what actually does? Here, I'm going to defer to Kathy Wood, and she thinks the future of cars are actually robo-taxis and full self-driving technology. In the Big Ideas 2020 report, ARC calculated that Elon Musk's robo-taxi fleet could generate more than $1 trillion in annual operating earnings by 2030. At the core of Tesla's autonomous strategy is the development of the robo-taxi fleet and its autopilot and FSD software. The EV automaker released its full self-driving beta late last year, which is capable of driving on inner city streets. 
Tesla's main advantage isn't that it has some of the best batteries in the world, some of the highest user ratings when it comes to the experience of being in a Tesla and hitting that acceleration. Its main competitive advantage is actually its software and the data it's been able to collect over a period of 10 years, having all of its cars essentially being moving robots that's collecting data. Tesla's goal is for you to be able to put a Tesla car in any sort of environment without it having to be pre and using its software, it's able to look at the world around you and understand what every single object is. And that's only possible by it being connected to a network that's been collecting data from hundreds of thousands of cars for many, many years. Even if Volkswagen is able to come out with a car that is functionally and technically exactly the same as a Tesla car, it will not have the full database of information that Tesla has collected. And this is going to be and is a huge first mover advantage. It's one of their most valuable assets. It's something that they could also sell on top of their software if it starts to do well. Right now, of course, their full self-driving beta is not perfect. There are a lot of issues and we are going to see news of different problems coming out and we'll see more FUD about how Tesla messed up here or messed up there, but they are in the spotlight. They will make more mistakes, but you shouldn't take their current little issues as a reflection reflection of what's to come because based on what they are building right now, based on what they have, I think the future is still Tesla's to lose and it's very, very unlikely for them to lose it. FUD around Tesla has been prevalent for years and that was not in a year where they sold 500,000 cars. So when I see Tesla at 653, I just see a very, very good buying opportunity. I'm happy for Volkswagen. I'm happy for Ford. I think more competition is always good, but I don't see a clear competitive advantage they have. But let me know what you think. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy who likes looking for the best investment opportunities, and I'm always open to other ideas. If you think there's something I'm missing, please let me know. This is Green Knight Trading, where squads become knights. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you, and I'll see you soon.